I started playing pool again in January 2023. I hadn't played for about three years. To my horror, I found my shot making was terrible. I decided that this is a perfect time to start over and really learn to have good shot mechanics. I needed to break old, bad habits and make new, better ones. I'm going to share with you what I learned when making my comeback. Maybe it will help you. I stopped shooting pool initially because of COVID, and I kept busy developing my Cut Angle Challenge 101 pool game. And then I had shoulder surgery with a multi-month recovery. Now I'm back playing again. This series of videos will cover shot making fundamentals and what I learned in my first few months back. I now am a more accurate and consistent shooter than ever before. Let me summarize my journey and maybe you can also learn things that will help you shoot better. I used some carefully chosen shot making drills and experimented with my mechanics. In this video, I'll cover the primary drills I used. In future videos, I'll cover aspects of mechanics one by one. I'll show the many variations I tried and what I found best for me. In this video, I'll mostly show me making the shots. That's so you better see the goal and to keep the video shorter. And it's good for my ego. But don't be fooled. Especially at the beginning, I actually missed way more than I made. And when I missed, I learned it was better to strive to make at least two in a row before moving on. And my form isn't very good yet. And that's really the point. In order to learn effectively, you have to limit the complexity and difficulty so that you're incrementally adding more. Otherwise, it's just too much and you can't really learn. I suggest starting with two shots straight in and the spot shot at a 30 degree cut angle. I have the straight in shot on the line from the pocket to the first short rail diamond and the ball about half a diamond down from the side pocket. The shots are fairly long, which helps detect errors. Shoot on both sides of the table. This is very important. Start by shooting softly, which is simplest, yet exposes many fundamental mechanical flaws, especially alignment. Stay with soft shooting for a while. You need to develop your self-observation to pick up nuances, and that takes some time. And you don't want to confuse yourself with the additional issues that come with speed until you're ready. On my first day back practicing, I missed about 19 out of my first 20 spot shots. Wow! Missing so dramatically and consistently is what happens when one consistently has incorrect mechanics. Note that a true beginner might shoot with more random error and actually make more shots. Note that shot making accuracy does not automatically get better. But I didn't give up, nor pick easier shots or distances. Instead, I started changing my mechanics. After I changed things for the better, I added variations. We'll come back to those variations later. If you miss, try to identify why and then repeat any missed shot until you make it at least twice in a row. If you know what you did wrong, just do it right now. Otherwise, experiment with your mechanics. Do multiple sets, both straight in shots, then both spot shots, and repeat at least three times. Once you are making progress, add a third shot pair. Shoot a spot shot as a slight back cut. That will be the quarter ball hit. Again, do it in both directions. This shot introduces several more challenges, 
including precision aiming of a somewhat thin cut. I found this shot quite challenging. Now, your sequence is two straight in shots, two spot shots at 30 degrees, and two spot shots at 49 degrees. I had also tried adding in a very thin cut into the side pocket, like this, but I wasn't learning much from it, so I dropped it. Now add in a fourth type of shot in the set. Take the object ball position for the straight in shot, but now work at various aim right cut angles. For efficiency, I mostly just did the eighth ball hits. So 7.2, 14 and a half, 22, 30, 39, 49, and 61 degrees. And after improving, adding in 70 degrees, which is 1 16th and really requires good mechanics. Seventy degree cutting. I worked the set like this. Two straight in shots, two angled rail shots at 7.2 degrees, two spot shots at 30 degrees, then two angled rail shots at 14 and a half degrees, two spot shots at 49 degrees. Then I'd repeat that set, but increment the angled shots to 22 and 30 degrees. Then the next set would be 39 and 49 degrees, and the last set would be 61 and 69 degrees. As you improve, add more variations to the straight in shots Try very small cut angles in both directions and try different object ball distances, especially very close, object ball to cue ball, and very far. But make sure you keep the object ball at least one diamond from the pocket so it's not a hanger. I have found that these add a lot. Slight cut angles actually happen more often than exactly straight so practicing them is worthwhile, especially for me, since I've not been good at them. It also helps develop aiming nuance, where I don't just lock in on shooting it as a straight-in shot. And actually, it helps my straight-in shots as well. Shooting with a long distance helps in other ways. These shots affect stance, head, and eye position. They also uncovered other shot-making issues I had. If the object ball was close to the cue ball position shown here, there are different sighting issues, and there, that's worth practicing occasionally. Now, very Q-tip position to include cueing high and low, and start trying the occasional higher speed shot. Find the speed just before you badly lose form, and use that speed to build a good habit and gradually work that speed higher. Keep a slow backswing without a jerk. No body movement. Stay down and watch the cue ball to, t the cue ball to target pocket from there. Try to avoid watching the object ball the pocket, except if you must, use eye movement, not head movement. Video yourself to help identify issues. After this, I added a different set of shots that helped me further refine mechanics and aiming judgment. The object ball is one long rail diamond short at the center of the table, shooting into each of the far corner pockets and using 7.2, 14.5, 22, 30, and 39 degree cuts. And I also use this as an opportunity to better learn these angles for these shots. Thank you.
I started with one aim right showing the cut in one direction and then trying my best to duplicate that same angle setup to the opposite corner using judgment. Then, after a few sessions, I set up both directions without any aim right. I would usually shoot three or four sets going up and down like this. 7.2 both directions, 14 and a half both directions, and so on, 22, 30, and 39. Now back down, 30, 22, 14 and a half, 7.2 degrees, then back up, 14 and a half, etc. Repeat any missed shot until you make at least two in a row. So, how should you aim these in any of the other shots? Well, it depends on your skill and your objectives. Doing your own aiming method, perhaps just do that. However, I recommend shooting known shots with known aims. If you set up the shots exactly, then you can use an aim that you learn for each cut angle. That's how I started aiming these to develop better mechanics. If you also want to learn to refine your aim and judgment, then evolve to placing the balls approximately in place. Start with your known aim and then use your judgment for considering making a small adjustment. There's a different variation of this with the object ball closer to the pocket and thus a longer distance from the cue ball to the object ball. I shot the full range of cut angles like the rail shots straight in at 7.2 through 70 degrees. I found that this helps find other issues to fix. You want to use these shots to learn to identify faults and correct your mechanics. So do not just shoot these over and over the same way and hope for improvement. You must learn to feel what you're doing and observe and try to systemat and try systematic controlled variations in stance and stroke and grip and vision. Thin cuts may also cause call for variations in aiming method and eye position and eye focus. I'll discuss what I do in later videos. I also strongly recommend you video yourself from various angles, especially on problem shots, and look carefully at the replay. There are two other things I do especially when considering any stance change, try the stance lined up on the cushion rail line and make needed adjustments to be straight stroking. I tend to favor just being a little bit on the cushion side of the line, but you could do the cushion. I do that because I prefer to have the tip come down and hit the cushion rather than the rail. So being just on the outside. Okay, that's better. So I have a tendency to pull my elbow my arm in when I follow through and go like that. I have to learn to go straight. Then try shooting a striped ball 
up and back at increasing speed and work to hit center ball without grip tension and with a straight follow through over the spot and then hold that for an inspection. I start each practice session with those two before I shoot at balls. Frequent practice with breaks really helped my learning. I did two and even three practice sessions per day with at least a few hours between sessions. I also took notes during breaks about what I learned. Look for my next videos covering variations on stance, grip, vision, and stroke. An aim right will help you easily and accurately set up the various shots covered here for whatever size table you play on. That's it. Practice with focus and intensity. Good shooting.